Thank you. So my talk is about 3D tiles next, which is uh, a new 3D tiles format. I'm working for SourcePole, a company located in Switzerland. We're doing web mapping, mostly 2D, but also 3D, and that's what this talk is about, but also QGIS on the desktop, and many other things. Yeah, the thing mentioned before was the T-Rex vector tile server, which is a 2D tile format. So you can do two and a half D there, but this talk is about real 3D objects. Um, there are some OGC standards around, around 3D. Um, um, I made a collection here. Prominent are CTGML, which is in version three, and but there is in the meantime also CTJSON, which is a similar model or the same model in JSON. Um, there is a common database, CDB, which is about uh, 3D objects. There is an old standard, 3D portrayal service. Um, and there are two community standards. These are a little bit different standards because they are made by companies outside of OGC and OGC adapts them as standard. Um, and the first one is the index 3D scene, I3S standard, which is from a3, um, it's in version 1.2, um, it's supported by RGS and so on, and it's yeah, started with City Engine and has also other implementations uh, out of A3 and also open source readers, uh, you can load them with Lotus GL and display them with Tech GL. Um, yeah, and these are the links to it. And the second one is the one I'm talking about, is 3D tiles uh, from Cesium. Cesium is a company, I'm not connected to the company, I'm the Cesium org side, um, which is a, a standard since 2019. Uh, and they published, together with it, Cesium JS, which is a viewer for displaying 3D tiles. And yeah, it has a standard link at OGC and on GitHub. And there is a 3D tiles next as a draft extension, which should be 3D tiles 2.0 as an OGC standard. And what I do now is I first talk about the current standard, which is in principle the same, uh, and then I will talk about the changes in the, in the new version. Uh, there are different kind of objects in 3D tiles. Uh, one is the batched model, um, which says you have uh, a certain number of models. So here you have two houses, two models in, um, in a certain format, and the format uh, is, uh, it has a JSON part, which describes like the, the bounding box of it, and the model itself is in a binary format, B3DM, which contains GLTF. And GLTF is a, a well-known 3D model format, which is embedded in this B3DM file with additional properties. The next one is an instanced 3D model, which means you have multiple instances of the same base model. You, good example are trees. You have one tree model or maybe some tree models and you have multiple instances of it. And you can change certain parameters in the instances. Here you see like a height which changes or some angles which change, but the base model is the same. And this is optimized for graphics cards. GPUs are very fast in instancing. So this is working much faster than having a thousand trees as separate models, you have to do that. If you have many trees, you have to use instances on the graphics card. And this is the same way, it's built the same way. It's a, a, a tile to JSON, uh, describing the, the tiles, and then the model itself is in a binary file, uh, i3dm, which contains a GLTF, so the tree itself and some additional data. And the third format is the point cloud format, which is um, a binary blob containing points and some additional data, 
for like color you can have for the, for the points. And then there is uh, composite tiles, which yeah, contains multiple models, which means you have a tile set, a JSON description, pointing to uh, different models. So point cloud models, instance, or um, the first one. What CCM provides also, and this is also in the standard, is uh, declarative styling. So they have a st styling language in JSON. Here is an example. So you can uh, add, in, add colors to, um, depending on certain properties. Here it's the hate property and have conditions for coloring uh, the tile set. I talked a lot about this GLTF. This is a standard from the Kronos group, which also uh, has OpenGL as a standard. And it's also a binary format. It can be JSON, but usually used as a binary format. It has textures, textures which are raster uh, data, can be PNG or JPEG or KDX2. Um, it, but it's called a texture because it's usually the, like the outside of a model. And the model itself is a mesh, which is uh, yeah, included in this GLTF. And you have a, a, also a, a material model, so you can uh, describe the, the, how you should render a, a model in form of a material description. So you have base colors, and then you have roughness, you have metalness, and things like that. So this is a, a way to describe how you should display 3D data. Uh, there are a few viewers for displaying 3D tiles. The most prominent is CCMJS from CCM, but there are also others. Um, there is, for instance, DECGL, which is good for visualizing 2D data, but also 3D data, and it has a, uh, a large library of formats which it supports, that is, is this Loaders GL um, li library, and this one supports also 3D tiles. Then there is a, a project iTowns, which one of, was uh, one of the first 3JS-based frameworks. In the meantime, there is a successor project of that, uh, which is more active in development. Uh, there is another one, Mapbox 3D Tiles, uh, which is a custom layer for uh, Mapbox GL for displaying uh, 3D tiles. I'm not aware if MapLibre is supported yet. Maybe, we don't know. Could be. Um, and then there is a different thing, which is a 3D City web map client. Um, 3D City DB is a a system for um, storing city models, so mainly uh, from city GML or city JSON, and you import that into a in PostGIS database, and it has the option to export this as 3D tiles. And then I listed another one, 3D tiles renderer. Um, the names are a little bit difficult because they are similar, and I think this is the NASA one. So NASA wrote also a open source implementation, 3JS based for displaying um, 3D tiles. And there are other kind of software for displaying uh, 3D tiles. There are also game engines. Um, Unreal is probably the more prominent one, which is in the picture here, uh, which is not the open source. Um, but the open source from Amazon is this O3DE, which also has 3D tile support in the meantime. So that's coming into game engines, and this allows interactive visualization of, of 3D tiles. Next topic is creation of 3D tiles, because, uh, yeah, either you have them, or you, you want to create them. Usually, you have your own data and you want to create 3D tiles, and that's not, that's, I think, would say the most difficult part of 
3D tiles, uh, how to create good 3D tiles, because you have to create different LODs, so you have to do simplification and so on. Um, and CCM Company provides a service, CCM Iron, and you can pay for using that, and this creates 3D tiles. Uh, in the open source world, there are also some implementations. There is one from uh, CCM as well, the CDB to C 3D tiles, so that's the OGC CDB format, if you have data in that, and CCM provides a, a C++ library for working with 3D tiles, and it has a JavaScript pipelines for working with 3D tiles. So these are all CCM projects, and there are also quite a few community projects. The first one I already mentioned is this 3D city database, which uh, is mainly for uh, city models. And then there is a Python implementation, uh, Py 3D tiles, which converts pound, uh, point clouds to uh, create point cloud tiles and P3DM has a P, P3DM API. And there is another one, uh, which is PG to P3DM, which converts post.js 3D geometries to um, P3DM tiles. A rather new one uh, is from OpenDrone Map, which converts the OpenDrone format, or is it no, Op OBJ files to 3D tiles. That's a common basic 3D format. So this is an interesting one. And OpenDrone Map is more specialized on uh, working with point clouds, but converting them to meshes. Uh, that's this part. And there is another project which I found, which has an awful name named 3D Tiles. Uh, and it has, but it has, I think, about 2,000 stars on GitHub. So it is prominent, but mostly in China. Um, and it has promising tools for converting uh, 3D data to 3D tiles. And the last one I've listed here is the CCM Point Cloud Generator, which is not from the CCM company. It's also a community project which creates 3D Point Cloud tiles. Talking about, uh, uh, talking within this conference, I, I've heard of more and I'm open for input. So I would like to add more uh, addresses to that list. And the list is the, the top, um, you are all there. I've started an awesome 3D tiles list, um, which has these viewers, which has tools for tile creation. It has more GLTF tools, which are getting more important with the new standard, and also Terrain tools. I mean, Terrain is also important in 3D applications, but it's not part of the 3D tile specification. So please contribute. I'm um, very interested in, in tutorials, in blog posts, links about uh, with more information, what you have done, what what problem you had, what you tried, uh, what you want to do, and I would also like to establish a a platform for discussing things about 3D because that's uh, missing in my opinion. So I could open a matrix channel or maybe on Discords. Uh, I'm open for, uh, yeah, for you or for your su suggestions. Um, I will add this discussion list also to the awesome 3D tiles uh, page. What about the time? Oh, okay, I still have time because I didn't start with 3D tiles next, <laughs> which is in the title. But it's quite easy. Uh, it's, the content is, is about the same. No, it is the same, but the format has changed. Um, on the left side, you have the 1.0 3D tiles, which are a binary format with a header, a batch table, and a GLTF. And the new format is a GLTF with extensions. So GLTF has an extension mechanism. And here is a next mesh features extension, which contains the same information, but embedded in GLTF. And this has the big advantage that 
every tool which reads GLDF can display this data. It won't support all these uh, advanced features or the extensions, but at least you can uh, work with them. And same for instance models. So the, the old binary blob is uh, in a, embedded in a GLTF, uh, and here we have two, instance, uh, two extensions, this mesh GPU instancing extension and the mesh features extension again. And the point cloud the same. Um, the binary, the points file, the binary points file uh, is, will be embedded in a GLTF file with this X features uh, extension. There are other extensions in this new format. So um, in, in the first version, we had always explicit tiling. So the tile set was declared in the JSON file. And now we have also a implicit tiling means you have a, a quadri tile uh, matrix or octree tile matrix, and you only have to declare uh, which tile metrics you use. And then you, there is a certain system which uh, says which is which tile. And all the subtrees are included, and so it can be quite a complex uh, tile schema. So this is, uh, again, a list of the new extensions used for GLTFs. Um, you can read about them by yourself. And yeah, the last slide is, is an outlook. So first, these 3D tiles next uh, should get OGC 3D tiles 2.0. And what I'm doing here and what I want to do is building a community around it about uh, to use it. So collecting information and discussing it. And the main workflows I think about is having a sitting model, creating 3D tiles or having OSM data and create 3D tiles. Uh, having 3D scenes like in a game engine or in Blender uh, and you would like to uh, export Blender, um, 3D tiles. Blender has already a GLTF exporter, so maybe we should uh, extend this one. And you could also use point clouds in 3D tiles, but I prefer there the COPC format. Um, and we, we can use both, so, but this is also a use case. You have point clouds and you want to use them in a as a tile set or as a, or as a cloud optimized, uh, in a cloud optimized version. And yeah, there is a new buzzword for that. So if you work on that, you're welcome in the metaverse. Uh, I think this 3D stuff is really a, a part if you want to have this augmented reality uh, application, this is an important part. So there will be money here and there will be, uh, yeah, people working on that, so I think this is really uh, a hot topic now. Thank you.